a quick question for everyone before we start off. You all guys must be having your phones and you must be having like 10, 15 different notifications on your phone right now, right? How many of you are exactly using the clear out button every time that you have on your phone, every time you're checking, checking your phone? How many of you guys utilize the clear all button to remove all the notifications that you have? I see a lot of hands over here. Okay, is there anyone who's actually taking the time out to check the notifications? No? Single one, single, okay, three persons over here. My heart goes out to all of you. There's a lot of effort that we have put into crafting all those notifications. There's a team sitting out at Mantra who does that, but there's a lot of garden sweat that goes into it, okay? And over the weekends, we put in our work over there, okay? So thank you, everyone. Okay, so uh, we'll just go a bit deeper into what exactly we do. I'll specifically talk about notifications, but this can also pan out to a lot of other channels as well, okay? Um, so question is uh, that what exactly do we do uh, for our promotional communication? How do we stay relevant for uh, uh, through our, most of our com communications that we uh, send out to our uh, customers, okay? So um, first of all, uh, when we need to understand what kind of data we are capturing from the customers, that is, that is important. And, and to what granularity we are uh, capturing the data. When you are browsing through Mintra, any kind of uh, products that you are browsing through, we capture a lot of data that you are actually uh, go, uh, when you are going through the app, right? Uh, by data, I mean, I'll just move to the next slide. Uh, if you see on the right side, you will find a lot of uh, different uh, product uh, uh, properties that are there, right? And you will be filtering out all of these properties. You, you'll be utilizing some of these properties to find out or filter your best suited products that are there on Mintra, right? Uh, so all of these properties are actually what we capture and we utilize uh, some of these data to craft our communication. How we exactly craft our communication according to these properties, that I will get, get delve into it in a deeper manner. But the crux of the matter over here is that what, what level of granularity do, do we have in the data and how correct is the data, how accurate is our data that we capture, okay? That's, that's the uh, major thing that we have to uh, see right now. So point is that whenever we are capturing more amount of data, that's when we have more weight, uh, enough of ways to leverage our communication and craft our communication to be, in, to be much more relevant to our customers, okay? Uh, I can give an example. If you, are, if you are just going through any wallet that you have, you are planning to purchase or any shoes that you're planning to purchase, you must be looking out for a leather wallet, right? Any particular color that, color that you're looking out for, or any particular brand that you're looking out for, what is the price range that you're looking out for? Uh, it can be something which is which is like a um, uh, outside India a brand from outside India, or else within the brand within a specific brand that is inside India. That can be also be a selection selection that we can uh, look out for. It can be a luxury brand. It can be a normal brand that we can, we are looking out for. So, lot many different ways that we can filter out our products, and we take the, those kind of data to personalize our notifications or our messaging. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, so basically, it's about uh, what kind of data we are capturing and how we uh, segment our customer base for our uh, no notifications or our communication channel that we are, uh, we are sending out, what, whatever kind of communication that we are sending out, right? So let's say we have a cohort of customers who are exactly interested in wallets, but more specifically about a particular brand of wallets or more specifically about a particular color of brand, wallets, okay? Let's take an example of a uh, black wallet that I want, and I want to propose something to all the customers who are browsing through the black wallet, okay? So I'll filter out every, every other customer who has recently in the last seven days or 10 days uh, been through uh, all the black or brown wallets that, that we have, they have browsed through, right? And I'll also check for what kind of customers are there who have not yet purchased or have made a purchase already, but they are still looking out for something else in the market, in, in, on the platform, right? So that's where I uh, have the opportunity to actually uh, like nudge the customer to either purchase if he has not purchased something or else I can nudge the customers to upsell or, or cross-sell something to, to my customer. So let's say if he's interested in a leather wallet, then I obviously know that the choice of the customer is actually leather, leather products, right? And I can definitely propose a leather belt or a leather shoe to him also, right? So that's where we do most of our segmentation. Now segmentation comes into picture where uh, we'll have an entire customer life cycle be starting from like the onboarding phase until the post-purchase phase. 
And each of these stages, we capture a lot of data where we can utilize it to have enough of segmentations done. Now, um, obviously, the, the more number of segmentations you do, the more relevant you are to a customer base. Okay, but uh, question is, how much of uh, segmentation can you do? To what level of segmentation can you do? And obviously, when you are doing so much of segmentations, that also means that you are operationalizing a lot of your campaigns, like you have to run some 100 and 150 campaigns in a day and target to specific target uh, customer cohort groups. Okay, so uh, before we come to that, how, as to how to operationalize those channels or how, how exactly we run a lot of campaigns, a lot of targeted campaigns within Mintra, we'll just get to the entire channel aspect and how exactly channels uh, we leverage channels to uh, send out different types of communication and for what purpose do we exactly utilize what kind of channels, okay? So push notification obviously has a very high visibility, but uh, that's not the case that I'm seeing over here. I think most of your people are actually moving, clearing out all the notifications. So kind of sad to hear. <laughs> so uh, anyways, but that's the kind of the major traffic driver that we have, uh, that is the push notification. Uh, and push notification also allows us to have, like a tryout with a lot of different formats, okay? You must have seen notifications from Sugi Zomato and, and I hope that you must have noticed something from Mintra as well. So we use a lot of crafty messaging that we do, a different kinds of formats that we utilize for our push notifications. I'll just come to that different kinds of format also. I'll just show you a bit of screen, screen grab that I have gathered. But uh, yeah, this is what drives the majority of the traffic onto the platform, okay? Now emails, uh, the second thing is about emails. Emails is where we have more of content that we can include within the email, uh, one single email. There can be a lot of personalization. There can be a lot of, uh, enough of like information that we can pass through within an email. Now this, this is where we, we have a lot of chance to engage our customers, not to just one proposition, rather through multiple propositions within the same email, right? So uh, email is not much of a traffic driver, but yes, it is more of an engagement driver. You tell, you tend to have a lot of awareness uh, uh, spreading done through emails, right? Although people might not even click on your email, but they definitely go through your email. It can be a content-led email. It can be an offer-led email. There can be a lot of different types of emails. But yeah, it's more about engagement rather than just traffic driver. Traffic driver is more of more of a task of notifications over here. Uh, third over here is SMS or uh, very recently introduced, which is the rich content SMS, which is a Google enabled product. Uh, SMS, although has been very costly, uh, it has a very low response rate. And I don't think uh, in current days, there are many people who are actually looking into SMSs or responding to SMSs also. So it's kind of a very dying um, channel, so to say, but yeah, RCS is something which, uh, can actually bring up the SMS part. Uh, that's where uh, the rich content comes into picture. You can pass on uh, multiple images. You can pass on uh, CTA buttons. You can pass on like videos, PDF images also over there, right? So that's about it. But yeah, the fourth and the most interesting part is about WhatsApp. Now, obviously any kind of, uh, anyone who looks after CRM will obviously be very excited about WhatsApp and yeah, let, let me just send out a few messages, few promotional messages on WhatsApp, and a, and a bunch of people will actually see that. There will be a lot of people who actually respond on WhatsApp, uh, amounting to some 20-25% of the response rate on WhatsApp. But Mintra has been very careful about what we exactly send on WhatsApp, in fact, uh, the entire Flipkart group, okay? And that's where we need to be very careful about how intrusive we are with our, uh, with our communication. If we are sending some promotional messaging at a very high frequency to our customers through WhatsApp, then obviously this is not a very good thing that we are doing with our customers. We have to be very careful of how we treat our customers and what kind of communication we are doing. Um, obviously we can be very targeted, we can be very uh, detailed in our communication and uh, very relevant to our communication. But, but uh, beyond a certain frequency, I think the WhatsApp communication itself does not make any sense to our customers. So we have been very careful about launching WhatsApp to our customers. We are still in the consideration as to how exactly we should be communicating to our customers and what use cases should we be following. Uh, last one is the web push notification. This is another format of push notification where people will have to opt in through a browser. Like if you are using Chrome browser, then obviously you have to opt in first and then we can send off a push notification. This is more 
of a something of a product which is enabled by Google, and it it allows you to deliver a notification only when somebody has allowed that, right? So that uh, like obviously means that you will have very low low reachability and low visibility for web push notification. But still, uh, this is this is still a very uh, good uh, channel for us as Mintra, right? So here are some uh, screen grabs that we have for all the content uh, um, or, or no notification that we send out. I haven't had something for emails, but this is all about notification. The, the extreme right one that you see is about the RCS messaging. Now compare the RCS messaging with a notification, which is very much similar. So that's where the advantage of RCS messaging comes in, but the reachability of RCS is actually very low. Um, You'll have a lot of formats of notification, and that's where we have a um, we leverage most of our uh, no notification formats. You will have something like a very colored uh, format of notification on the bottom half. Uh, that's where uh, that's that color notification actually grabs a lot of attention of our customers. That's that's one of our primary drivers. You will find something like uh, on the middle of it. If you see this one, this is actually a related. Matlab, this is one single notification. Uh, if you extend the notification, you see this full image. But if you if you have the shortened version of the notification, you'll find only the upper half of it, right? So this is not exactly a textual notification; rather, only a single image notification. And if you extend that, it opens up into an entire image. Uh, what you see on the left hand side are uh, normal formats of notification. There's a multi CTA notification. You'll have multi CTA buttons over there. Uh, the bottom half of it. On the corner, you will have that as a timer notification. That is also a primary traffic driver, although we utilize it in a very, um, very rare fashion. Um, so these are this is this is not the entire universe of the notification that we formats that we send out. But obviously, there are a lot of other formats that we utilize, and it is more about uh, like what type of uh, content we are sending out. And also about how re how relevant is the communication to our customers, and how crafty are we with our communication? Also, it's it's not just that you can just tell them straight up that this is like a three hundred percent off, a thirty percent off, or a three hundred rupees off uh, offer that is there for you. Rather, you have to be more crafty about how do you communicate that that to your customers, right? Uh, so that this is where more more of a personalization comes into view, where majority of the content that you see over here that is actually personalized um, by personalization it can be something like a uh, you see over here hrx shoes shoes uh, flat 799 only now hrx shoes must only be sent to people who are who have a sportswear affinity and sports shoes affinity that's where segmentation comes into picture but yeah the 799 is something which is parameterized this is variable for all the customers the, uh, different types of customers will have different Kinds of offers that are applicable to them. Um, now, obviously, we have been at the forefront of uh, introducing a lot many different uh, new technology that is available on notifications, and it is more so. It it is it is equally a a contribute uh, like product and tech is equally a contributor to our notifications as much as uh, marketing com uh, or communication or copy team basically. We will look at this uh, slide now. This looks like a very simple notification uh, that you see, but there are a lot of complex uh, uh, things that are happening behind it. One thing is so there are two parts to it. One thing is about uh, how do you add on the recommendation engine onto your notification. The other thing is about uh, how do you stitch like multiple images within your notification. If you see, these are like three. Uh, it's a collage of three images. But if you click on the right button or the left button, you can still go through multiple images that are available. You'll have like five to six different products that are pro proposed over here, and each of those products are actually um, it's it runs via recommendation engine. That means it is super personalized to a user, right? Each of those those products are actually uh, different for all the customers. So that's where we like merge the recommendation engine on the back end which suggests the kind of products and the dynamic imagery takes care of adding or stitching on the images and also giving some kind of uh, information on what exactly 
is the um, product telling like it can be something about um, uh, women's kurta or house of patodi which is a brand that we have launched so it can be a lot many different things right uh, so this is like uh, the very top of the game um, notification formats that we utilize Al although it's very complex to run these notification formats but yeah this is this is kind of the future that we are looking out for so yeah we uh, I have gone through most of the formats and segmentation ideas and everything, but I'll just go back to the segmentation that we discussed earlier also, right? Now, uh, I talked about all the different for formats of notification, but we'll just discuss a bit about segmentation and what kind of data do we utilize in our communication. So if you consider this, uh, the second stage where the customer is actually considering uh, or going through some of some of our products, and he's still at a stage where he's undecided and deciding upon what products to buy and which one to filter. This is where we get to get a lot of information about what kind of affinity base he belongs to. It can be a price-based affinity, it can be a product-based uh, article type affinity. We can have something uh, like subcategory, category level, and style ID level are the very basic of ones. But it can be something related to price. It can be something related to us, or which kind of trend he's looking out for. There are a lot of trend definitions also in Mintra. If you are looking for a, some, some something like a um, uh, spring summer or something like a rainy season, something su suitable for winter. So we have a lot of style definitions to that as well, right? So obviously we capture that, and we how do we utilize that? We we utilize that to create segments, multiple segments, very small segments. But yeah, when you have like large number of multiple segments, then obviously the number of campaigns that you run in a day is also increasing, right? This is about affinity. Now, when you are finalizing the purchase, that means you are at the add to cart stage. Uh, we know that there is an intent from the user to purchase that item. Now, what information do we have about that item or what information did we have prior to that, when he was browsing that. Uh, how can you stitch that browsing information and the add to cart information to propose something which is still not added to cart, but yet is very relevant to the customer. It can be something like if he's, um, if, uh, if a customer is actually looking out for a kurta, then we can actually um, uh, give a matching, um, let's say sari or a matching uh, something from personal care also, right? Uh, I'll take an example from uh, beauty and personal care. If something somebody is buying a, a lipstick from a particular brand, then obviously we can upgrade the brand uh, she is purchasing from. Okay, uh, we can uh, attempt at upgrading the price point that she is purchasing from, or we can try to upgrade um, the kind of um, the kind of product that she is looking out for. If lipstick has lot many variants, right, uh, and if she is aware of something, then obviously she is not aware of the other kind of product that is there. So it's more of awareness that we are also, uh, that we are driving and also at the same time we are upselling or cross-selling something to the customer as well. Like, so the next is, is about the order place. Now we know that somebody has purchased something, so what next is he looking out for? It is about predicting what exactly should she be buying after she has made a purchase. So I'll take an example again of beauty and personal care. If somebody has gone through let's say purchased one or two of the shampoos that is available. And obviously a conditioner will be something that we'll be proposing or else some, some other item which is hair oil or something, some, some other item that is related to that product. So that's where most, so the, once you purchase something, you'll get a lot of notifications after that, which is proposing a lot of variety of other things that are, uh, that, are that latch on to that custom, that, that particular product, right? So it's more of a upsell opportunity or a cross sell opportunity that is there. Uh, and after like a post purchase, whenever you understand that a lot many of our customers are actually belong to these many cohorts. Let's say I have a customer who is a very golden, golden customer for me. There's a customer who is, who was a golden customer for me, but is actually dying out. He's not purchasing enough of, you know, at a certain frequency or a, enough of number of times from, from the platform or um, he or she is not exactly ordering at a certain monetary value that I predicted him to be. So that's where we, she, we see the shift in the uh, product or the customer group that they belong to, right? And whenever there is a shift that is happening, we also communicate to our customers. We reach out to our customers, ki what exactly, how can we exactly improve their buying experience or are we, are we still relevant enough for our customers or not? 
and this is where most most of the activities happen where we need to where the effort is more towards upgrading the the stage at which the customer is at if if somebody is having a certain frequency then how do we increase his frequency bucket of purchasing if somebody has a certain at a certain price point then how do we increase the price bucket of that customer right so uh, it can be something also like if a kids uh, if a customer is purchasing kids wear at a certain age let's say he or she is the parents are actually purchasing from a uh, age group of 2 to 4 months then obviously we we'll, we know that after a period of 4 to 5 months maybe the parents will be looking out for something which is more related to a 6 months kid right so that's where most of our communication are yeah so all of this i have talked about there's a lot of data processing which is involved obviously when you capture a lot of data there's a lot of data crunching that also happens right uh, but over there the biggest concern is when you have a huge amount of data how accurate is your data or how accurately you are capturing the data that you need to understand first because a lot of times you will miss out on the data or the data might be bogus or faulty or for some reason it is not really you cannot derive any insights out of it so that's where the data definition comes into picture so you need to really define as to what kind of data you are utilizing and first of all check whether the data is that there's a data sanity or not first of all okay once you have established that yes this is a clean data that i have and obviously cleaner process is never a very easy task to do it kind of is a very complicated thing when you are working with a lot of data so clean up and processing is very significant part of the data processing part okay now the third aspect of it is what is the kind of attribution window that you are looking at obviously when you are running a campaign then people will come up to and and ask ki if there is a notification that has been sent by a team the team will come up to me and ask what is the kind of revenue that i got got from that notification right how many people did you bring up to your platform and how much of revenue did i get out of that that's where people ask the question ki what is the attribution window that you are checking for and what is the attribution model that you are checking for it can be like something obviously the effort is also from the digital marketing side where we are showcasing the same products over there as well right and questions will come up as to what kind which do you which point do you attribute it to is it the first point of contact is it the last point of contact right that's that's where you need to first of all define and establish that these are the kind of attribution window and this is the kind of attribution model that i'm following um, and yeah obviously you will have a entire funnel that you are looking at if somebody if you have sent out notifications to x number of people then there is a delivery happening uh to why number of people then after delivery there's a number of people who are clicking on that then after that how, how many people are actually staying on the app and having a session more than let's say 5 minutes okay now after that how many people are actually uh, going through the notifications and having multiple sessions uh throughout the day if we if customers have multiple sessions then what exactly does it amount to from a add to cart perspective or a wish list perspective and finally when you have the final conversion of an order then uh, what's the attribution window that you look is it, is it like two or three day three day attribution window that you are looking at or a one day or a one session attribution window that you are looking at yeah so all of these combined you will have a like a funnel analysis and find out what exactly what's the roi on your communication that you have sent out right uh analysis also involves like understanding if you have sent out a notification to let's say a bunch of people and out of that people you need to also understand what kind of um segments behave how differently to your to your communication also if if uh, if i have sent out to multiple segments one single communication to multiple segments then obviously i'll have an understanding ki how exactly each each of those segments is actually responding to my notifications right and everyone will of the of the segments will actually Uh, vary in their response rates also will will uh, like that's a very um, apparent and very clear thing that we see in our data also and over there the most important fact is that whenever you are pulling out any data you are processing and you are finally arriving at a certain numbers uh, you will miss out on a lot of things if you have like a excel sheet with only numbers right 
and that's why you cannot bring out a lot of insights into that but when you have a good visualization tool with you that's where you try to understand how exactly your data is varying if you have a lot of filters that you can add a lot of pivots that you can add a lot of graphs and charts that you can add a lot of pie charts that you can add and there is a lot of way in which you can play around with the data right when you have visualization and if you have that visualization power if you have a good tool with you then obviously there is a lot of insights insights which come out of it something you which you might not even anticipate but yeah the visualization so is huge there it might not might not be very apparent on the excel sheet but yeah something is much more readable on a graph than on an excel sheet right and yeah when you have a lot of such learnings from a huge number of campaigns that are running then obviously there's a lot of feedback that you need to capture and also put it back onto a campaigns right and that's where you need to be very strong about uh, you will have a lot of insights on what exactly worked out in our notifications is it like something like a up to 700 700 rupees off was actually working out or is it like under 699 699 uh rupees or rupees call out was actually working out for me so you'll have a lot of analysis of what exactly what is the kind of call out that works out best for your customer groups for for a certain segment it might be a certain kind of communication which is working out but that communication might not work out for the other segment right so this is where you need to plow in a lot of that feedback onto your campaign once again once you have a understanding once you have a record keeping of all those insights you like drive all those insights and implement them back to your campaigns right so i think this is it thank you guys any questions that you have yes the slide yeah this, this one? one yeah uh, so you said emails uh, i mean just comparing emails and sms the response rate you've you know given the same for both Uh, but i feel you know email is a lot more engaging and the response is much better on the email as compared to sms because sms now nowadays no one even so dying channel basically no one even opens right i mean there's so much of spam already i mean email on the other hand ge- gives you much better you know open rates click rates and all that you've actually you know put them in the same bucket so now, i don't really yeah, agree so that. i'll tell you what exactly i mean by that uh, emails can be something which is utilized for more of a content led led activity where you pass on a lot of content but you do not expect the user to actually click on something and come on to the platform right that's where more of the engagement part comes into picture it's more about driving awareness rather than driving the so driving traffic onto the platform is just is the primary goal right that's the ultimate goal but you can't just harp on that single thing right it has to be more than that but you got campaigns like uh, cart abandonment browse abandonment and you know all of that uh, we so we do not run it through emails basically you don't do cart no. abandonment we done it we have we always do it through notifications but never through emails email is something which is more of a engagement driver it's more okay, of a for, content for led thing rather than something which is which is done only for like conversion so you've done it in the past and you know come to this conclusion or yeah so basically we have experimented a lot of things um, but uh, if you see if you go through mintra's email it is more about something which is kind of like the sale which is coming up or the theme of uh, of the sale which is coming up or something related to a specific content which is there it it can be very simply something which is a uh, uh, color color led we have a color theme email which which really gives you an option of what exact colors that are available on the platform and uh, obviously a lot of people have uh, have a certain type of color affinity now you you we will talk a lot about those colors and what are the products that are available within those colors right and how to style obviously if in mintra if you there's a section of mintra which is called a mintra studio mintra studio is all about engagement and it is more of a influencer led um, activity over there that's where people engage with our customers and say that this is the latest product that is available this is the latest trend that is available and that's how we educate our customers also and over in in that education process there's a purchasing process also which happens right okay another thing that i wanted to ask you your uh, uh, screenshots regarding the notifications i mean yeah. some of them are you know pretty complex to implement i'm sure because uh, and what tool are you using for notifications uh, we have a in house tool 
Okay, but, uh, that is developed in house. All right, yeah. all right. Okay. Oh, hi. Uh, for a brand like Mintra, which has millions of users and uh, quite a lot of uh, user attributes and preference attributes, uh, how do you go about uh, creating so many segments uh, with a combination of uh, attributes that you have? And uh, my follow-up question is: Once you have decided on these number of segments. how do you design campaigns creatives content and so on do you automate a lot of this because infinite number of uh, segments that you can create with the number of combinations that you have at scale how do you yeah. execute this that's a very good question actually um, so i talked about this one right uh, this is where i missed out on on a certain thing called uh, campaign automation also now when you have like uh, different uh, segments and that those segmentations can reach to some 100 or 120 segmentations within a day now i don't have a team big enough to run 100 100 120 campaigns in a day right so what do i exactly do if i have segmentation segment creation can be a easy process it can be a query that can create multiple segments right it can give you an output of it but what exactly do you do to run those campaigns or how do you um like suppose if you have a image over there then how do you differentiate the call out within that image it over here what you see is a image stitching basically there's multiple product images which have been stitched together but there's another way of doing that in which there's a text overlay on top of image also so if you want to call out like a offer of 399 off for somebody uh, but for a other set of customers you want to call out a 500 rupees off call out but the look and feel of the same of the campaign remains the same right so what exactly happens is the look and feel of the uh, notification will remain the same but the textual part on the image where you are talking about the 399 off or the 500 rupees off that varies according to each customers okay that's where your automation comes comes into picture you will have that's where the data and the image part both are stitched together this is not really a creative team which is working on that but rather a automated um method which is we're running on the back end to create all those images any other questions some learnings do you want to gather from mintra okay so uh, this is going a little beyond uh, from marketing and communications also so while personalization is needed i understand that um, so be monitoring or uh, understanding the trends of each consumer that what kind of purchases they are doing what are their favorite colors brands etc so on the product also the moment i click a notification and go on the product what kind of does personalization happen on the product also when i see recommended uh, uh, dresses or items as per my flavor or taste Uh, because this is something which amazon does very well like the entire feed is personalized that way so does mintra operate in that way see or? obviously yeah. everyone every other platform has a recommendation engine it's about how relevant is your recommendation engine what kind of inputs do we take for crafting our recommendation engine uh, when you talk about amazon or flipkart it is more of a ecosystem there are a lot of different things that they Uh, sell, but at Mintra it is more about fashion apparel or personal care, right? So our recommendation engines are crafted in a very different way as compared to them, right? This is where more of our um, like what kind of fashion trends are we looking out? Are the, is the customer looking out for what kind of color? What kind of dress, uh, type of like what kind of article type is he is he or she looking out for? What kind of subcategory or category is he looking out for? A lot of different combinations. like i said the amount of data that we gather we take in that amount of data to build in the recommendation engine as well right yeah, yeah. so uh, i would like to uh, get to know like how effective are sort of uh, vernacular language based marketing see we are uh, in the scheme of mintra we do not experiment as much with uh, vernacular language uh, because our brand uh, has a certain way in which we communicate right and we want to keep it within those limits but i have i've been working with uh, a lot many different companies before mintra as well that's where we used vernacular i was working with udan udan is a 
B2B company before my Mintra stint. Uh, so over there, we used to do a lot of vernacular. Now vernacular is where, uh, because at Udan, the customer is more of a store level um, Kira, uh, Kirana store. The He's the owner of that, right? And he might not understand enough of English, but he understands definitely English, Hindi or Telugu, right? And when you, when you communicate in Telugu, that's obviously something that he will click on and he will read. It definitely works out. But in B2C setting, you think like... Uh, vernacular. It's just that ki for Mintra, it is not more of a thing that we do because it's not really um, like in line with our brand proposition that we have. We stand out as a brand which is more about style, which is um, next level fashion that we propose. So uh, although we go out to tier 3, tier uh, 2 cities also, but yeah, we haven't tried out much of vernacular languages. Thank you. Yeah. How do you go about attributing uh, the actual sale to a particular channel? Because like, for example, as a customer, I engage, uh, suppose I engage with your notification once and after a couple of days uh, due to the only channel strategy, I might engage with some other form of communication. How does the end sale gets attributed to a particular channel? And my question is, especially when there is a mix of uh, app properties Versus uh, external proper uh, channels like a Facebook app or, and in-app yeah. properties that are yeah. there, right? So there are different models in which uh, we follow, uh, and each team follows its different model. But at a central level, there is a specific um, a method that we have decided on as to how to attribute a session or a order to a specific uh, marketing effect. Okay, now. At a central level, we define as to what kind of sessions come up and each of those sessions actually are um, trackable on the UTM parameters that are there. Okay, that's about sessions. Now, how do we uh, attribute a order that is placed? For all the orders that are placed, that, that's where we actually take a, a first uh, first click or a first uh, um, uh, impression while a attribution window. And the attribution window actually depends um, uh, a lot. There are different use cases that we follow, but Generally, what we take is a, is a one day or a one session attribution window that we take for order order orders, basically. So different teams have their own ways of uh, following the attribution and to measure the, measure the performance. But yeah, at the center level, when you are deciding upon whether digital marketing is doing something or CRM is doing something or store is doing something, they follow a certain rule of how do we attribute. So one day Generally, at a central level, this is like a one-day attribution window. But yeah, methods vary from team to team. No. Uh, see, you are talking about uh, TV commercials, right? TV commercials is an entirely different uh, aspect. That uh, And measuring the goodness out of that is also a, a completely different method. Even I'm not very 100% sure about how TV commercials and how attribution happens to those things. But yeah, it's more of a like a uh, overall goodness that we see after a commercial has a run, right? That's where that's how we measure that. But yeah, for digital and CRM, it is more of a very granular level attribution that you can have. But for a TV commercial that you're running or a print ad that you're running, that's something that you measure over a period of time and the goodness that you see over the standard level. That's how you measure it. Yeah.